of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, accompanied by strong desire to alleviate the suffering. So the person has a deep concern, a deep sympathy for another. But they didn't just have the sympathy. They are not just saying, I'm sorry, oh, what a pity. But they are also backing it up with action to remedy that situation that the person is going through. Or that need that the person has. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Compassion goes beyond feeling sorry for somebody or something or a situation. It's not uncommon to have somebody who, have an, who, who has an opinion about an organization or in this case a church, what they should do, how they should do it. But they have never ever presented themselves to be the vessel that will be used to make it happen. Compassion goes beyond feeling sorry for somebody. Compassion goes beyond feeling concerned about somebody and what they're going through, but backing it up also, going beyond that and actually acting <laughs> on what needs to be done to remedy that situation for the sake of that person and of course to the glory of God. So say to the person next to you, be compassionate. <laughs> it is important for you and I as we live a life of compassion, which should be a reasonable service, which should be very common for us, which should be normal for us, which should be you not know, a big deal really for true believers, it is important that we make others feel special. We make them feel like they matter. Amen. We don't always be quick to judge them and give up on them in what they are not able to do yet. But we help them along the way Amen. and hold their hands out of compassion. Amen. Help them in that area of need. Many people have needs and they are not even asking God for, for any help because they did not know they have a need. Many people are ignorant and they don't even know they have ignorance. So they are not praying for knowledge. Compassion makes you see ignorance in somebody and you begin to help them. Compassion is not about somebody suffering alone. It's also about somebody lacking something and you don't only see the lack, but you do something that takes them from that point of lack to the point of being blessed in that area. That's what compassion is about. It's not always only about helping somebody with money or with sickness and so on. Make them feel special. Let people know you for your kindness. Let them know you for the grace of God that you carry and you demonstrate in every situation, either towards people or even concerning an organization or a group that you belong to. This is very important. It's very important for us to be compassionate in this world that we live in full of people who couldn't care less. Be a person who couldn't care more. That is care so much that there is no more care to care. In a world where, where it is full of people who care so little that they can't care less than that little. You be full of so much compassion that you care so much that there's no not any more care for you to care. Make it your point of spiritual duty on a daily basis, not only in December. Leave that more to the world to only celebrate the love of God in December. <clears throat> but for us, we celebrate it every day. Amen. Some of them are direct. You put money in somebody's hand. You put a cloth on their back. You bless them with a gift. You remember their birthday, their wedding anniversary, whatever. But some of them are things that you do that changes their minds Hallelujah. to Christ that turns their hearts around to Christ. Compassion also does that to people. And I pray that you and I will be one of those. Amen. Vessels of divine compassion. Amen. This month is a month of divine compassion and it's so fitting that we're talking about compassion also today as our neighbor. Amen? Amen. Compassion makes you help those who are ignorant. It is compassion that makes you look onto somebody who 
the world calls racists. And instead of you doing what the world does to racists, you are meeting them with compassion. Amen. You are not encouraging what they are doing with a racist mindset, but you are doing something that corrects a racist attitude. It is compassion that makes us do that. Amen? Amen. So compassion is what we demonstrate because it makes us help those who are ignorant, those who are hateful, those who are wicked. Jesus was teaching us in Matthew 5, 44, how to love our enemies, how to love those who hate us, how to pray for our enemies, how to forgive those who despitefully use us and persecute us. They talk to us anyhow, they talk about us anyhow, they don't even know us, but they are talking about us as if they know us. And they are not even giving any room for being informed about what they are saying. And you hear all that, and yet you have a heart of compassion, knowing that sometimes compassion is what we do to help those who are ignorant. So as soon as a person is racist and spoke in a racist way, you are seeing a, an opportunity to be compassionate rather than be vengeful. When you see somebody who is offending you for the optimum time, you are seeing another opportunity for you to demonstrate that you are a Christian who is a vessel of compassion. Because if there is no hate and no wickedness and no offense and no ignorance and such things like that, then what is the point of our compassion? A light is only effective when it is in darkness. Right. Somebody shines a light here right now. We'll be looking at the person as if something is happening up there. <laughs> Your light is more powerful and much more heaven bound when it is shining in darkness. So when you are compassionate towards people who don't deserve compassion, that is the divine compassion that you and I need to have. Amen? Amen. So that uncle, that auntie, pray, forgive them, talk to God, and then pick up the phone and say so to them that you have forgiven them. Don't refuse to call that dad, that mom, because maybe your mom or dad, out of the emotion of that time, but they didn't correct it, and now it's becoming unwise, they, they've created a separation between you and your dad or your mom. Let compassion, if you truly are a Christian and you are not waiting for people to deceive you, go and do what the word of God demands for you to do. Be compassionate. You are not condoning what that dad or mom did over the years that caused that in the first place. But don't limit yourself with what your mom or dad told you and therefore didn't allow you to have that relationship with that, that parent. Be compassionate and go and do the right thing. Yeah. It doesn't mean you are condoning what they did, but there's always a holier way of doing everything. Amen. 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 Be compassionate. Look at the person next to you, you know, look at their eyeballs and say, Be compassionate. Be compassionate. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let us remember the compassion that God had for you and I. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not, not after we have seen that we have not changed or whatever. Not, not after we have come to God and appreciated God and then God now says, okay, because you appreciate me, I will send my only brother's son. While we were still disregarding, disrespecting, refusing to acknowledge him, he sent his only begotten son to prove to us that he loves us Hallelujah. and that his name is love. Amen. I pray that when your siblings, your relatives, when they remember you, Amen. they will get to a state where they forget your name because your name is now compassion. Amen. So I want you to look at the person next to you. This is only for those who know the names of anybody else apart from themselves. Look at that person and tell them from today, your name is compassionate than their name. Say to them, Your name, your name is compassionate to you. Praise the Lord. Your name is compassionate Samson. Compassionate token. 
God bless the man. I think it is very I think in the spirit, in fact, talking is right, but then, pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the end of our people today. 